Hey everyone, Rushlock again in Kerbal Space Program. We're going to go through the first of the training scenarios. Uh, this first one is getting started in basic construction. Um, I don't think we need to read these out to everyone each time, but it should give us the basic concept of what this mission should entail. This tutorial presented by famous rocket scientist Werner von Kerman himself covers the basics of rocket construction in the vehicle assembly building. He's waiting for you down there and is always in high demand. Don't dally. Let's just load in there and see what we find. Basic construction, welcome to today's lecture on vessel construction. I'm Werner von Kerman. Whether you want to put a satellite into orbit, make a transcontinental flight, or step onto the very surface of the, of moon, of the moon, uh, you're going to need to build yourself a ship. It should be pretty easy, even if you're not a famous rocket scientist like myself. In this tutorial, I will first show you around the Kerbal Space Center, then take you to the vehicle assembly of building, where you'll learn how to construct a simple ship, We'll cover adding and removing parts, what the parts do, how to change the performance settings of the parts, which have the option, and how to control staging. At the end of the tutorial, you will have a craft fit for a quick hop from the launch pad. At each step, I will lock out all controls other than the ones you need for that step. If you still manage to mess up, it took <laughs> even me some time to become as skilled as I am now, uh, you can press back button to go back to fix things. It won't light up unless you do mess up. We are now at the Kerbal Space Center. I'll give you a quick rundown on how to get around. The KSC, for short, is home to the pinnacle of Kerbal endeavor and achievements for space exploration. Using the facilities you can see here, you will be able to manage your space program, create rockets and planes, track your Kerbal explorers as they roam the solar system, find exciting new uses for explosive substances, and in case of emergency, hire more Kerbals. To find out more or find out about each of these facilities, you can hover your mouse over them or the facility buttons, they show up when the cursor is outside the window. If you need to repair a structure or upgrade them in career mode, you can do this by right-clicking them. Take some time to hover the mouse over the buildings and see what each are. And when you're ready to enter the vehicle assembly building... Uh oh I'm guessing there's more to it when we click. So, Alright, so tracking station. Tracking station, all ongoing missions can be viewed and focused, landed, craft, can be removed or be recovered here from here as well. I'm guessing this is like a uh, campaign mode thing. The launch pad itself seems pretty um, straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me. The VAB is what he was mentioning before. Mission control itself. Uh, space plane hangar. Spacecraft designed to be launched from the runway. Ooh, man. Um, when I played before, this is what I, what I like doing, making planes. I didn't think of actually making one that could achieve orbit from there. That'd be pretty neat. Astronaut complex. The administration building. R&D, research and development. I guess that's all of them there. So let's just go in the VAB. Very good. What you see in the middle of the screen is the construction area. This is where the parts are placed and your craft is constructed. On the left side of the screen is the parts toolbox. It will show you all the parts that you have available in each of the different categories once there are any to, go, uh, any to pick, that is. Because we unlock them. If you want your craft to be controllable, you need a command module. And it's best to make it first part of your, part, part, the first part you place. This part will either contain some plucky Kerbal crew or an automated pilot mechanism. As we're just starting, there's only one choice. Go ahead and pick the command module from the, uh, the pods tab. Uh, which one do you use pods? I don't want to leave. It said left side, so I'm guessing this thing. There we go. After at least one part is placed, you can look around with the following controls. Uh, orbit the camera using the arrow keys or drag the right mouse. Move the camera up and down with page up and page down or scroll wheel. I'm glad they have an uh, option on that. Zoom the camera with uh, plus and minus on the keyboard or using shift scroll wheel. If you'd like your pilot to be able to make more than one flight, he or she will have to return safely to the ground or water on Kerbal, on Kerbin. Um, parachutes are, are a simple way to make sure that happens. They can be found on the Utility tab. Change the tabs by clicking their icons on the left of the part list window. I'm guessing over here. There's going to be a utility one over here somewhere. There it is. There's the parachute. 
When you're choosing parts, you can view the details of the available parts by hovering over them in the toolbox. When this info is visible, most parts have an additional information window which can be opened with a right click. Note that the parachute states the effective diameter in each state and what the maximum safe speed for the deployment is. Go ahead and select the, M, uh, the Mark 16 parachute uh, by left clicking on it. Then move it uh, to the top of the command pod so that the green sphere at the bottom of the parachute lines up with the green sphere at the top of the pod. Click again to attach it. It's pretty basic. Some parts like our parachute here have configurable options. To see these, we need to right click on the parachute we have just uh, attached to the pod. Do that now and you'll see the available parameters. On the parachute, you will see that we can adjust our altitude and at the atmospheric pressure at which to open. That setting can be quite useful on distant worlds. For now, let's check that the opening height on the chute is at least a thousand meters, because safety is the Kerbal way after all. For the min, um, the min pressure slider, move it a bit to the right to 0.2. Uh, I'll move it over a little bit. Please enter another number. Oh, 0.02, so we're going to go this way. There we go. This setting prevents the chute from activating until the atmospheric pressure is above the configured value. On Kerbin, 0.2 is about 9 kilometers in altitude. So even if you stage early and arm the, par uh, the parachute, it will, not, it will wait until then to activate. You can hide these options by right-clicking on the background scene or picking up another part when there's one available. When you're happy with that, we can proceed. So we got rid of that. Next up, we're going to need something to make us go. Click on Engines uh, tab on the left to show the available engines and solid rocket motors. There's Engines. Grab one and connect it to the bottom of the pod. You may need to zoom or move the camera. So I was going to say we need to be able to move. Uh, let's see. WASD does nothing. Arrows, I think they said. There we go. We can zoom in or out with this. That moves up and down. This is in and out. Okay. So we're going to put this. We selected it. Put it there. Come down this way and then we can zoom out a little bit. We can arrow key to change orientation. Grab one and connect it to the bottom of the pod. You may also you may need to zoom. Yeah, yeah we'll do that. Oops, I forgot. You're just starting out. You're not a famous rocket scientist. To make that craft survivable as it stands now, you'd have to be better at rocket science than me. Impossible. The problem with that craft is that the, the solid rocket is too powerful for the payload. A single small pod and a chute. It will either burn up on ascent from going too fast or burn up coming back down. Even if you survive that, the craft's mass will cause it to fall too fast for the parachute to operate uh, properly and you'd hit the surf surface before you could stop. Okay, I promise to teach you how to change that to make sh uh, make it work in a later tutorial. But for now, let's continue. Um, well, at least this way I get to tell you about removing parts. Pick up the BA BACC thumper and either drop it back over the parts or press delete. So if I hit this and delete, it just goes away. Cool. Instead, let's add a solid motor that's a better match for a ship this size. I guess it's this one. The RT fleet, there we go. At the start of your career, you will have what I consider rubbish parts. Literally, the motor here looks like it may well be a converted trash can. That said, it does have enough oomph to get this little craft moving skyward, and quickly. As you progress, you'll be able to unlock more engines and other parts. For now, let's pick up the flea and connect it to the bottom, which we've done. Nice one. You've built the simplest survivable craft possible. We could go launch this right now, but it might be safer to explain one other thing first. In the bottom right, you will see the staging stack. It is the box with the number zero and the icons, the parachutes, and the engine in it. This stack shows us which parts will be activated as we stage our rocket, uh, which is down here, I'm guessing, this whole thing. What this shows is what we activate, or when we activate the next stage, both the engine and the parachute will be triggered. Uh, 
while it could be considered funny to open the chute and fire the motor at the same time, it's not going to give you much of a flight. To fix this, we need to separate the engine and the chute into two stages. If you mouse over the zero stage, you will see a little plus and minus appear to the left of the box. Click the plus button to add a new stage. If you add too many, click the minus button on the extra ones to remove them. Make sure you have precisely two stages. So we're going to do this. Okay, and hit next. Excellent. Important to note that the stages activate from the highest number and then count down. So our first stage will be, uh, be stage one, the engine. Our second stage will be two, zero, the chute. Uh, so I need to move this thing down here somewhere. Like that, right? Now dragging the engine, yep, there we go. That's it. We now have a safe, well, relatively safe craft that's ready to go. Let's make sure that we ha uh, that if we need this design again, we don't have to build it all from scratch. At the top of the screen, you will see the name for our craft. Untitled spacecraft doesn't seem so majestic. Why don't you change that to be uh, something more your style? And you can add a description if you'd like to. When you use the load screens later, these names and descriptions will help you grab the right vessel. When you're happy with the name, click Save. Uh, click on the Save icon in the upper right. So where do I change this here, I guess? Um, let me hit Save somewhere. Okay. Excellent work! Feel free to play around with the parts and techniques I've shown you, and when you're ready to continue, press the red button in the upper right uh, to exit. Okay, I thought it was going to be like an exit game button. Back in the training menu, try the Flight Basics tutorial to learn how to fly this little craft, and then the Intermediate Construction tutorial can teach you more about the editor. Note, any vessels you create here will be lost when you exit. This is just for playing around. I wonder if we, that means we saved it for no reason. And that's it for the first one. We'll see you guys in the next video.